Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is a new project I'm working on because you know it's better than finishing projects, starting something new. New projects always feel the best. So we're buying this cabin up in the mountains and I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to build a pair of speakers for the cabin. I've always wanted to build a pair of speakers so the opportunity arose so that is exactly what I'm doing. These come from a kit. I wanted to, you know, start my speaker building journey with a kit speaker, but there's a little bit of complexities to this that I want to go over in this video. So let's talk about the LX Mini kit speakers. So as always, feel free to use the chapters listed down below to kind of skip around and find the sections that interest you most. So in this video, I'm basically just going to be going over the overview of kind of where I am at this point. These are simply just the prototype. I wanted to kind of slap something together really quickly to see if it was worth investing the time in this kit to see if it was worth going any further and kind of overdoing it like I tend to do for most projects. And these are a little bit more involved. Although they are a kit speaker, they are a fully active speaker, meaning that they have a DSP component and an amplifier. So there's a whole electronic side of this project as well, because just throwing together a pair of speakers wasn't enough. I wanted it to be a little bit more involved than that. So let's first start by looking at the actual kit, um, because I think that is um, pretty interesting in and of itself. For anyone in the know with DIY audio, these kits might be pretty familiar to you. These are the LX Minis from Siegfried Linkwitz. And if Linkwitz rings a bell, it is the same Linkwitz from Linkwitz Riley crossover designs. He has a pretty long history in designing uh, loudspeakers, crossovers, things like that. These kits consist of a three inch full range driver on top here, up here, and then a six inch full range driver down here. There is a PVC pipe down below that is uh, a certain amount of distance, and then a PVC pipe up here to hold the other speaker. These are kind of um, somewhat open baffle, meaning they don't have an enclosure per se. The um, bottom driver does have an enclosure, but the top driver just kind of sits free and open in the top. And it is kind of a unique design to use two full range drivers. Now, I'm not gonna get into the full details because I am not able to give the full design details away. This is a kit that you pay for the design details of. So if you want to more, know more, click the link down below, buy the plans, and do that. So I'm not really going to be giving away the plans because I'm not allowed to do so. Uh, let's see. So the interesting thing about this design is that it is a fully active design. Traditionally in a normal speaker, you have a set of binding posts on the back and you have an amplifier. You take the output to an amplifier, hook it up to the speaker, and then it separates out the frequencies to these specific drivers using a passive crossover. A passive crossover is just a series of passive components, resistors, capacitors, inductors, things like that, that separate out the frequencies so that they go to the appropriate drivers to make sound sound. In an active speaker, it's a little bit different. The crossover actually sits before the amplifier and you use DSP or some other active electronic components to separate out the line level signal, then send it to the amplifiers and then to the speaker. What that means is you need an amplifier for every specific speaker driver. So this will have a four channel amplifier and a DSP unit. So that's the electronics I was talking about before. So not only do I have to build the speakers, but there's also going to be an outboard box that's going to be the DSP and the amplifier setup. So that should be pretty interesting. Uh, this design, I'm kind of um, taking my own take on it. So let's look at what I'm doing to kind of um, put my own spin on it. The original intention and purpose of this kit and this design was so that basically anyone with a few basic hand tools could put together a set of high quality speakers like this. Hence the use of PVC pipes for the base and the top. You don't have to build any fancy cabinets, nothing like that. And the original design actually call, called for much simpler components. All the 3D printed stuff, I'm just going off design, but this was like a um, rubber coupler that you would find at Home Depot. This was like a block of wood and the driver was actually held in place just by a few screws screwed into this top PVC pipe. Obviously I have a few more uh, basic hand tools than the average person so I'm going to take my own little spin and do as much 3D printed possibly machined components as possible. 
The original design, um, to be nice, looks very rudimentary, um, I think at best. This is my prototype, my rough prototype, and this actually even looks substantially better than what the original design looks like. The original design looks very uh, DIY, and I'm going to try and get as far away from that DIY look as I can, but I just wanted to throw something together just so I can kind of um, you know, see if it's something I want to continue doing. But what I'm thinking for the um, top sections, this is all going to be as 3D printed as I can make it. Uh, I'm not really sure what filament I'm going to be using. Maybe ABS, maybe carbon fiber nylon, eh, maybe PETG, we will see. But I want this to be uh, more seamless in design, uh, the transition between the bottom piece and the top piece. So that's kind of the design goal for this top section. For the bottom section, which I'll kind of show here in the video, I just want a more streamlined base. There's not a lot going on down below, but just something a little bit more streamlined than obviously what you're seeing here. Now let's talk about the electronics. So don't laugh, but here is the current state of the controller amplifier board. The secret sauce to this kit is really in the DSP. It is in the signal processing on how it splits out the signal into the specific drivers and all of the little uh, filters and everything that go on. And that's all contained inside this mini DSP. On the mini DSP, this is a uh, two by four HD. You've got an optical input as well as an analog input right over there. So your signal will come in from here all the magic happens and then you have your four outputs on uh, two for the left two for the right and then they go into these two guys these are bang and olsen ice power 125 asx2 each one of these is a stereo amplifier with built-in power supply obviously class d which you can tell from the size of these so integrated power supply everything's ready to go I basically have the signal going in, and then I have the output here. Uh, for the output, I'm using the uh, Nutrik uh, Speak-On connectors, which look a little bit something like this. Like this. It is a four-pole connector, which means that it has four connectors inside, and that just kind of goes inside there and clicks in place. So something like this is really nice, so I don't have to have two runs of speaker cables. I can just have one of these structured cables and I'll obviously make this a lot prettier. So this is just the prototype uh, for the upgrades. This has just kind of a plug-in wall wart power supply and I want to get a little bit better than that. I'm worried about yeah, noise and just you know a crappy power supply feeding the main DSP. So I have a troidal transformer and I'm going to make a um, linear power supply for this that will run strictly the uh, mini DSP. And then I also found these little adorable VU meters. Look at this. So I've got two of these, one for the left and the right channel. And so that'll be kind of what, you know, a little display on the front of it. So yeah, that's the plans for this. But this whole thing needs to be enclosed in a nice little enclosure. And so power will go into this power the amplifiers, power the mini DSP, and then you'll have the signal analog and optical that will go in, and then you'll have the two connectors going out to the respective left and right speakers. So the next step for me is to finish the design of the speakers, uh, figure out how to print and make the parts that I'm designing, and then figure out how to do the enclosure and the electronics controller board, how I'm gonna arrange all that, finish that, how the enclosure is going to be, all that good stuff. So the next step is to get this design in SolidWorks and kind of figure out how I aesthetically want it to look, what materials I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be 3D printing the vast majority of this, so I'm not sure at this point if I'm going to use like Nylon X for that kind of surface finish, or if I should be going with an ABS or ASA and do some kind of acetone vapor polishing. Not really sure, but those are a couple of the options I have on the table. And then for the electronics, which I don't know why I'm looking over here, they're over there. For the electronics, I got to figure out kind of how that's going to be all built and put together. So there's going to be at least eh, probably two more videos on this, but they do sound pretty good. Uh, we had these in our main living room next to our main system. Um, if you care, our main speakers are a pair of Wilson Audio Sashas. So being next to a speaker like that is a pretty tall order and they, they sound pretty good. They're on a different level, but they do sound pretty good. They have that 
audio file quality sound to them. They just need a little bit of tweaking in the DSP and you know, need to be made out of some better components. But overall, pretty happy with them, worth pursuing further. So I think I'll leave the video at this. I'll turn these on, play some royalty-free music. Don't judge me on the music choices. I'm just trying to find stuff that isn't gonna give me a copyright strike but you can actually hear these things and see the drivers move and all that good stuff. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy listening.